Hello networkers and welcome back to another episode for Ask a Network Engineer. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you have any questions about being a network engineer, this is important. Make sure to post those questions at roundhub.net slash A-N-E. That's where I'm looking at all your questions for Ask a Network Engineer moving into 2020 and beyond. It's a lot cleaner platform that I get to look at. So make sure that you're doing that. And if you like this channel and you want to support this channel further, it means a lot to go to rodhub.net and check out our different training plans and courses that we have. Okay, so in this particular episode, I'm gonna answer one of your questions. And this one is, that question is, if certifications are useless, then what are some alternatives? And why do people continue to pursue them? So this was a very blunt question that was asked and I thought it was a great question. So I wanna talk about that for a few minutes in this episode and what to kind of keep in mind. Okay, are certifications useless? Uh, why do people pursue them? So there's a lot of moving parts here. Here's the key thing that you should understand. Certifications are useless if you do not have the if you do not have the experience to back it up. Because it's just like with a college degree. You may go to college, but what is your experience to back up that education? That's why having both is really really critical because it makes you more valuable when it comes to looking for opportunities. Now it's not required. Now, when people say that certifications are useless, that usually means that they do not have the experience uh, to back up that certification. Because getting certifications are pretty easy. There's no requirements for that. You simply get a book. I got many books up there on my bookshelf. All you gotta do is get your books or your online material, go, th go through all of the material, study really, really hard, take the test and you pass. There's nothing much to it. It's a very easy process, which is why a lot of people get certified. And I love that. It gives an easy opportunity for you to learn about the technologies, the concepts, and then that can start to help you when it comes to practical implementation on um, in your job. Practical experience is a little bit different because you can only gain that officially on the job. There is no clear cut process for doing that. You have to interview and the interview will have their particular set of requirements of what they're looking for. And if you don't meet those requirements, you're not getting the job to get the practical experience in the first place. So what I would say is the following. Certifications are good um, if you're doing it kind of in tangent with practical experience. And here's what I mean by this. If you only have very little IT experience and you get your CCNA, don't do CCNA and CCMP and CCIE and you just keep moving up, but that experience is not moving up with it. That simply means that it's not aligned with what you are uh, or where you're at. That just means that you're very known for just getting books and studying and you're just passing tests. That doesn't really equate to practical real world job experience. You want to make sure that you get the certification. So that looks good. You got your CCNA, your lock solid. Get some entry level experience. That should be your very first thing to make sure that your experience and your CCNA are together. And that means very basic type of experience. And that means, it's a word that I heard before, you got to hustle. You need to find out how can I get this entry level experience? If I'm, if I'm not getting it through a company, then what can I do in terms on the side, right? I can go on classified particular um, web pages like Craigslist, for example, or any other thing that's very equivalent to it. And just say, hey, I'm offering to configure your network for VLANs or interfaces, very basic stuff. Say very basic things of what you want to do. It doesn't matter though. You just want to try to gain that experience. That's all you care about. You, don't even, you probably don't even care about getting paid for it. You want to get that experience. So then when you get that, boom, that counts as entry-level experience that you can put on your resume. 
then when, then when you get enough of that, then you can kind of do your CC and P. And then of course get experience that will of course get up to that same level as well. So you got to do um, so you got to do both things in tangent, um, and that's what's really important. That you shouldn't just look at you know I got to get a networking job in order to get that experience. You should still do that, but if that avenue isn't working, then you have to look at other side opportunities, side work to get the experience because that's really what's going to really matter. And also, as I said many, many, many times before, location, 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 that is critical. If you are living in a location where job opportunities, especially for networking, is very, very rare, that's gonna be very, very challenging. And if that's the case, then either you have to move to a location where, it doesn't, where there's better opportunities or look at maybe remote type work or consulting type work to gain that kind of experience. And that's pretty much it. I mean, in terms of like alternatives, there really is no alternatives. The alternatives is really, you get the certifications, okay? Um, you have, you get a job as a network engineer or something that has network responsibilities. Um, that can be through consulting, that can be through side jobs, that can be through a particular project that you're doing for other companies or things like that. Um, but yes, you want to, of course, get that on a regular job. So that's still something that's really important. Um, that's really all the alternatives that you're looking at because that's what companies will be looking for. You know, you may say that I love networking, but that's not going to be something that they're going to hire you for. They're going to hire you really because of your experience. What if, if the position that they want to fill, you meet those requirements. And the, and the certifications part, this is why, uh, to the second part of the question is, why do people continue to pursue them? Because certification simply gets your foot into the door. It at least gets the phone call. So when you have a CCNA or a CCNP or even higher than that, you are more likely to get a phone call, right? And if you get the phone call, then hopefully, again, your experience and your knowledge can then get to the second step of an actual interview, and then the interview will get you to getting hired. I recorded um, other episodes about, um, I'll post some information right here, about job, about the job process and what to keep in mind about interviews and getting hired and some of those factors. Those are things that you should definitely check out in the A&E series. But check out all the episodes because I provide a lot of good valuable tools and information that can help you to get into the path of becoming a network engineer. And we are done with this episode. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer, you can post that by going to rodhub.net slash A-N-E, where you get to vote on the current topics that are listed. And you can also post your own questions that should be released for Ask the Network Engineer. And until next time, as always, keep networking.